All right, so in this video, we start with a new concept called electrical potential difference, or voltage. We often use the term voltage instead of electrical potential difference because we have this thing called electrical potential energy. And so when you talk about electrical potential and electrical potential energy, sometimes people get the terms confused. They're intimately connected. Electrical potential difference between two points in space is defined as the change in the electrical potential energy that a test object would experience when it's moved between the two points, divided by the charge on the test object. So what we do, we have point A and we have point B. And we have some charge here, any value that you want, Q. And we move that charge by some path, and it does not matter which path we take, because the electric force is a conservative force. And over that path, we measure a change in electrical potential energy. That is the negative of the work done by the electric force. But the value that we get here depends on this value of the test charge. So in order to eliminate that, we divide by Q. We call this quantity the change in electrical potential, or the change in voltage. Now it's important to understand that voltage is related to potential energy. And consequently, since only changes in potential energy have any meaning, only changes in voltage have any meaning. So when people say things like, that object's at 10,000 volts, that's really kind of imprecise. It's 10,000 volts with respect to some other point, which you meant as being the zero point. In other words, you can't talk about being at a point when what you're doing is calculating over a path between two points. And that's what you're doing when you do voltage. Now the advantage of this approach is that we built things called voltmeters that measure the left-hand side. You put one lead the negative lead at your starting point and your positive lead at your finishing point and it automatically measures this. So it has delta V. If you know delta V you can multiply by Q and find the change in potential energy. Multiply by minus sign and you found the work done by the electric force. So developing these things called voltage is another way of working energy analysis like conservation of energy and such in these problems like you did in chapter 6 but this time we're doing it for the electric force and we're going to be spending a lot of time with voltage over the next few chapters so it's important you get a good understanding that this change in voltage which is all that has meaning is directly connected to this concept of change in potential energy now the units. Well, the units come from the definition. The units are a joule divided by a coulomb. Well, that's a joule per C. Well, this is an energy, and this is a charge. And we could have left it at at joule per coulomb, or we could have left it at newton meters per coulomb, but it turns out there was this guy, Alexander Volta, who was very important in developing the first practical battery, and so as is happening in this portion of the course, they began after Newton to start naming units after people. So it's called the volt. You'll have to remember that a volt is always a joule per coulomb. The electrical potential is truly a scalar field. Because we divided out the charge, it depends only on the point in space, and that's why we can build devices that just measure space and don't care about the charge they send through the space to get that value. It's a scalar field, and it's created by charge when it creates the electric field. So electrical potential difference, we're talking about potential energy per charge. And it's a scalar field. When we talked about electric field, we're talking about a vector field. And it's defined as the force divided by charge. 
So when you're working with electric fields, you're like working Newton's second law with forces. And when you're working with voltages, you're like working conservation of energy problems with working energies, like potential and kinetic. Now we found that a lot of times hard problems, problems that were the forces weren't constant, so you didn't have constant acceleration, were easier to work. It can be done more effectively from a work energy perspective because it's easier to deal with scalar math. We found that back in chapter six, way, way back in the course. The same thing is true here. While we often want to know the force and calculate the acceleration, there are many problems in which you're asked, what's the speed of the particle? Rather than finding acceleration and figuring out how to get back to velocity and then find the magnitude, we can get there directly from kinetic energy and energy analysis. And these are scalars, and that usually makes problems that are not constant acceleration easier to work. So, in electrical engineering and physics, we often deal with currents and we deal with voltages. We do not deal as much with electric fields. They are connected. It's just that it's easier to do this math and then convert rather than do the whole problem with this and then maybe convert back up this way. So we're going to deal a lot with scalars. Your voltmeter does not have a direction. It just gives you a value like 7 volts minus 3 volts and you can just add them together with good old scalar math. Let's take some examples of how we can use electrical potential to find energies. A particle with charge 5 microcoulomb moves to a potential difference of 20,000 volts, as shown below. What is the change in the potential energy of the particle? Well, delta E, I'm sorry, delta U is equal to Q delta V. Now here's one of the things you got to do. That's Q times V final minus V initial. Here's a battery. The long side is the plus side. The smaller side that looks like a minus sign is the minus. That means it's lower in electrical potential compared to that side. If you want to think about it in terms of ground, it's like the low part, and this is the plus part up here in space. This height, GH, is like equivalent to our new idea of V. Some place we call H equals zero some place we call zero V. I'm going to call this place zero volts. The place that you call zero volts your reference point is often called the ground. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a real ground of the earth. It means it's what you're going to call zero volts. That is an, always an arbitrary point that you get to choose. Only change has meaning. You can choose any place to be zero and you won't mess up your change. If you choose this to be zero, this place, according to this, is 20,000 volts higher. So that would make this 20,000 volts. If you choose this to be 100, this will be 20,100. It will be higher by 20,000 volts. That's the difference. Now this particle starts on this side. That means VI is 20,000 it goes across this direction. In other words, it's repelled by these positive charges, attracted by negative charges over here. Experiences a force due to the electric field here. This is zero. This is 20 kilovolts. So delta U is 5 by 10 to the minus 6 coulombs times a minus 20 kilovolts. Notice you don't need to even convert this. You can leave that as a micro. A micro times a K is a milli. So this is minus 100 millijoules or minus 0 0.1 joule. Get used to working with these SI units rather than converting them all the time into their exponential notation. So the potential energy goes down. This is much the same way as a ball drops and the potential energy goes down. Now the potential energy goes down here. This is a conservative force. Where's that energy go? It goes into kinetic. The ball picks up speed. 
So that's the next question that could be asked in this part of the, the uh, section. What's the change in the kinetic energy of the particle? Work non-conservative is delta E. This is chapter 6, way back. That's delta K plus delta U. But E field is conservative. So WNC is 0. So 0 is delta K plus delta U. Delta K is equal to minus delta U is equal to 0 0.1 joules. They can also now ask you to find out how fast the particle is going given that you knew what its initial speed was. Again, those are really not problems that are new to this chapter. Those are problems that are due to the old material. The only thing new here that you have to learn is this formula for how to calculate U in the same way that you had to learn about MGH, GH times M, calculate potential energy change, Q times the delta V calculates potential energy change in electrical potential systems. Since electrical potential is defined in terms of potential energy, as I said before, only changes have meaning. You can only define an electrical potential energy at a point in space if you define a zero potential reference point. So for instance, people often say something like this. A person is touching a Van de Graaff at a potential of 50,000 volts. Now there's this Van de Graaff accelerator like the one I had in class. And this person's on some sort of an insulated chair usually. and they got their hand touching it and we say this is 50,000 volts. But what does that mean? What it means is that if you call this zero that's at 50,000. It's 50,000 higher than whatever you call this to be. Now there could be another person here. Let's call them the red person maybe. And they think that they're fine because they're at zero. But that's one way of looking at the problem. Another way of looking at the problem is this is zero volts. That person's fine. But if that's zero volts and it's 50,000 volts higher than this point, then this is minus 50,000 volts. Who's right? Both are right. Only the difference, 0 minus a minus 50,000, says you get 50,000 volt difference. 50,000 volts minus 0 says you get 50,000 volts difference. This person is not going to get shocked because as long as they stay where every point of their body is at the same place, it's like being on the second floor of a building. You can walk around safely because every point you step is at the same gravitational potential. Here, each point on the dome turns out to be at the same electrical potential, as does each person on this person's body. But if this person was to reach out and touch this person here, then the electrons could flow up and down between the potentials. In the same way, if you step out the window of the building on the second floor, you will then change potential energy to kinetic energy as you fall. When you do this with electrons, they pick up energy. It's called electrocution. All right, we'll pick this up again on the next video.